peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is my June and July sewing plans and fabric haul. I haven't done one of these for uh, since November, I don't think. I, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So I have been working on my 2021 Make Nine plans, which is the turquoise and pink collection. I am ever so close to finishing that. I have the final patterned fabric cut out and ready to be sewn up into an 8013 and I have two trouser weight fabrics that I have the trouser muslins cut out and if they work then I should be making those into trousers which is exciting and then that will be my 2021 make nine fabrics done. The next batch of sewing that I'm going to do I wasn't quite sure if you've been watching the waffles you'll know that I cut out the Vogue 9296 out of this kind of steely grey blue leopard print viscose that I got from the textile center this is one of those fabrics that I saw it that I and I loved it but it wasn't so so precious to me that it was like if this if this dress doesn't work out that I'm going to be upset so I because I was trying to work out what fabric to make it out of as I mentioned in my patreon exclusive waffle my stash now there are very few fabrics in there that I am not 100% in love with so I kind of struggled because the uh, 9296 is definitely a wild card of a dress for me I really really love it I just don't know if it's going to suit me but it's cut out now and I'm going to make it. So that was the first step in deciding what fabrics I was going to be sewing in June and July. And as you can see, that escalated quite quickly. <laughs> when I sorted out, or when mum and I sorted out the fabric stash, I tried to put everything into content type and then colour order, which I really love how it looks. And I've ended up with these fabrics kind of together and that's how the next collection has been decided. So the first fabric I have to show you is, I'm going to turn the camera crazy, it is a Robert Kaufman denim that I got from fabric.com and it's I believe called a railroad den denim. It has some stretch in it which is really nice and I bought this, it's making my eyes go funny, I bought this with the intention of making the closet case, sorry, closet core pack, closet case Closet core patterns. <laughs> They've changed their name. Closet core patterns. Ginger jeans out of it because I've always wanted some. Oh, it's the, I'm going to put this down because it's making my eyes go crazy and it's making the camera go crazy. I've always wanted some stripy skinny jeans. I bought some from Next and they really didn't fit me. They really, really didn't fit me and they weren't high waisted. They just, no. So I ended up sending those back and then I found this denim and I've been hoarding it for probably about four or five years now. I have decided that I don't like how I look or feel in, I think feel is a better, yeah. I don't like how I feel in skinny jeans. So I'm going to make either the Decades of Style and Pie Waist Trousers or the Vogue 9257 or something along those lines from this stripy eye hurty fabric because I think it's going to look really cool. I think I will wear them way more often. I don't want to make a skirt out of this. It would be really easy to make a skirt out of this but yeah I want trousers so that's the plan for that fabric. Ugh. I actually have five meters of this eight ounce denim from Minerva Crafts. This one won't hurt your eyes. I bought this with the intention of making, again, a pair of wide-legged jeans. They're going to be jeans in as much as they're made of denim so they'll look like denim trousers. They're not going to have like the jean pockets detailing on them or probably the gold top stitching because I, I'm a, bit, a little bit scared about doing that. But they will look De they're going to be denim trousers and they're going to be wide leg denim trousers and again either the Vogue 9257 or the Decades of Style Empire Waist trousers which I will put big belt loops on because I think that's going to look really really cool. Maybe the lander pants, True Bias lander pants but I've only traced those at the moment. I haven't gotten as far as muslin, 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 <laughs> twirling. There you go. I haven't got far, as far as twirling those yet. I have with the two previously mentioned patterns. But I bought five meters of this with the idea of then making a denim jacket to go with it. I'm quite tempted to make the Gertie denim jacket again. I made it in a turquoise denim, which I really, really like, but I made, I, I did my usual alterations of making it an inch longer in the bodice and an inch longer in the sleeves, and I didn't need to do either of those things. I do have the Sew Over at Sorrento jacket, so I might try that one. The reason I like the Gertie one is because it's fully lined. 
Oh, well, no. Technically, the pattern only lines the bodice and you leave the sleeves unlined, which I find odd. If you're going to learn any part of any jacket, it should be the sleeves so they're easy to get on and off over things. The girty pattern doesn't, so I just put sleeve linings in there. It might sound weird lining a denim jacket, but I really like that idea. Also, I have a whole bunch. I need to find some of them because when they got when we all, all our stuff got packed up, they've been put in different boxes, so I don't know where they are. But I have a p bunch of patches like Firefly and Star Trek and Firescape and Battlestar Galactica, and I want to get myself a Ravenclaw patch because that's my house and those kind of things. And I think that would. I want to make two denim jackets: one with all the patches on, and then one without. <laughs> One of my geek jackets and then one is a slightly more normal jacket, but that's what I'm planning for this five meters of denim. Then I have this absolutely beautiful viscose that I got from Stitch Fabrics and this, there was only three meters of it left. It fell into my basket while I was buying mum's birthday present. Technically I bought this during my fabric buying ban, but there were only three meters of it left and I really want to make a sew over Eve dress out of it and if I had waited it probably would have gone. So yes, my fabric buying ban has been an utter fail. I've bought two fabrics. I'm determined that that's all going to be all I buy. I've got, I've got six weeks to go. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But yes, this this goes. I think I want to turn it into a sew over eve dress. I have a lot of sew over eve dresses. I'm not ruling out making more. I definitely want to make one out of the Savannah viscose when I finally get my hands on some of that. There are other dresses out there that I want to try. I really want to try the sew over at Doris dress and this could be a possibility for that. But I would again need to make that out of a less precious wearable muslin fodder fabric before I cut into something that I absolutely love like this floral because oh it's just so pretty. So, so, so pretty. Ultimoda Digital Print Collection is on the selvage, and I got it from Stitch Fabrics. And like I say, I bought the last three meters, so I'm sorry about that. Next, I have some more viscose. This is a royal blue viscose. I have made the bottom of a dress, the 6380 from this, and I really, really love it. I have a lot left over. I had five meters of it, and I managed to cut the bottom of the dress and the, the bottom skirt lining out of that dress out of it, and I still have a lot left, probably about three meters, maybe a little bit less than that. I was thinking about making a plain dress from this, but I just don't think I would reach for it. I like print. I like planes to go with my print skirts and things like that, and I have a lot of printed skirts. So I'm thinking this is going to be hopefully a 6563 top, and then also a shirt if I have enough. I think that would be really nice. I may just go for the shirt with super, super large balloon bishopy pirate sleeves on it. If if I don't have enough for both, I might go for the shirt over the 6563. It's going to be tops because it will go really nicely with a lot of the other skirts and things that I've got and also the trousers that I have in my wardrobe. So a couple of tops out of this blue. Next we have this Again, kind of eye hurty fabric that I got from the textile center. I think there is still some of this available on their website. It was in the sale and I bought this as wearable muslin fodder because I liked it, but I wasn't like, oh my God, I love that print. And I want to make the True Bias Shelby dress out of this. I have some fabric in my stash, the, the it's the Lady McElroy Vibrance, Artistic Vibrance print in viscose and I want to make the Shelby dress out of that but that was really expensive and this was £2.99 a metre so I want to trial the Shelby dress in this first. I think this is going to end up looking really really 90s. I watched Ace Ventura Pet Detective the other day and Courtney Cox's wardrobe in that film is stunning. I love it and it's all kind of viscose shirt dresses with little ties on the back. It's basically true by Shelby's and then some amazing suiting. So I think this is going to look really, really kind of pet detective Courtney Cox 90s awesomeness, which is making me like this fabric more, but it is still one of those ones that I am happy for this to be a wearable muslin fodder because whilst it's the right type of fabric and it will give me the result I want, it's not a print that I am so, so precious about that I won't use it on, a, on an untried dress. 
as it were. So true bias shall be for this one. Bear in mind I, I'm giving myself till the end of July to make all of these things. <laughs> Next up we have another five meters of viscose with navy polka dots on it. Again this is from the textile center and I want to make the McCall's 6740 with this. I think I have that number correct. I have traced that pattern and I needed to do a three, three inch full bust adjustment to it. I have cut the bodice pieces only out of calico to trial that pattern because the way that the pattern piece came out after the full bust adjustment I was like oh that looks a little crazy I hope I've done this correctly turns out I have I followed instructions from Cashmerette so why you know I'm not doubting that that the instructions were were good and correct and obviously worked but just my interpretation and you know actually application of them so i've made the muslin and i really really like it now this dress is fully meant to be fully lined which with this fabric i am going to do because as you can see it is <laughs> i think you can see yeah there you go you can see the shadows of the other polka dots under there it is fairly sheer i am going to fully line this dress and i'm going to do the view d the longer version i really like the tiny little straps that cross over the back i think they're gorgeous i just know I'm going to wear a bra with this and so I'm going to want straps that will cover my bra and I'm trying to decide whether I add that strap in as well as the two that cross at the back or turn one of the two that cross at the back into a strap that goes over the shoulder but I have marked on my muslin on the back pattern piece where that strap needs to go to cover my bra that is all prepared and ready to go which is really exciting because I think it's going to be a really really lovely dress and again this fabric is one of those ones that I saw on the textile center it's just like ah oh, polka dots again it's a fabric that I love but it's not super super precious print that I can never replace like polka dots while I may never get this exact fabric again I can get a navy polka dot fabric at some point in the future whereas some of the kind of like tropical prints and things are never seen again <laughs> trying to keep these tidy so that I can put them back into their cubby hole when I'm finished talking to you guys again this is from the textile center this is a navy check rayon and I love it. It's kind of a cream background rather than white so I think you can see it's kind of looking kind of creamy next to this dress and this dress is a cream background so it's a quite a dark cream with the navy's check on it. I really really like this. Five meters again. A lot of these ones if I have enough I'm going to try and make some kind of a top out of what I've got left as well. Probably a 6563 because I absolutely love that t-shirt although I'm not sure it would work for this one because that gets cut on the bias although it could be interesting. I am in equal measure really excited and absolutely dreading working with this because as I say it's a rayon. I want to make the By Hand London Anna bodice with a full circle skirt on it. I have a dress in my head that I've seen on Pinterest and I'm hopefully going to be able to put a picture here for you of that dress. I just have in my head that this is going to make that dress and it's going to look awesome and it's going to look good on me. I love the By Hand London Anna bodice as you guys know. I think I've made something like 30 of them now. Every single one of them is in storage in my room because none of them fit me anymore. I traced it out seven years ago now. Is it seven years ago when I started properly sewing this time around? And I need to trace it again. Thankfully By Hand London are the ones that got me into tracing my patterns, not cutting them out, so that I still have my original Anna, P uh, not PDF, my original Anna paper pattern, and I'm gonna be able to trace out the larger size because I haven't cut into it. That's one of the reasons I trace. I'm still gonna do a how and why I trace my patterns video. I really want to do that because I love the bodice. I think it's a really good bodice for this kind of large, large scale print because whilst it does, when I do a full bust adjustment, which I will need to do, does give me bust starts and then there's the waist pleats in there. I think that this expanse in print in especially a large print like this works really well because it, it whilst it's broken up kind of like here, here, the print stays intact. That's why I've made so many of them. <laughs> Purely and simply that's why I've made so many of them. I also want to try and extend it so it's a top. So just from the waistline extend it down but leave the waist pleats so that they are sewn as is that length so that they give you the shaping at the waist and under the bust and then have it flare out from there. I am a huge fan of Bianca from The Closet Historian. She makes an amazing Kind of shell top with buttons down the back. I hate the ideas of buttons down the back because I just I struggle enough with zips trying to button myself into tops I would hate having to do that but I have some really expensive summer weight wool suiting in my stash that I want to make a top and a skirt out of and I have it in my head that it's going to be the Anna kind of bodice 
foot extending into top form so that's another reason I want to retrace it is to, to make this dress and then to experiment with some tops which again might be with the excess of this fabric although I want a full circle skirt out of it so there might not be any excess of this fabric. Next up we have the Lady McElroy Mopsy print. I'm gonna get it really close for you guys because this is teeny tiny bunnies I used to be a Playboy bunny and I went through a phase of buying anything with clothing wise with bunnies on it. I had a little shirt dress from H&M. I had a jumper which I still have with a giant bunny on it. I had a dressing gown which has now been turned into two dog beds. Anything with bunnies on it I would buy. So when I saw this Mopsy print I loved it. I have the ocean background which I don't think they have it available anymore but they have it on spearmint as well which I have eight meters of because my best friend is going to get a dress out of that and I liked it so much that I bought some for myself as well. I bought three meters of this with the intention of my with my birthday money last year. This was from mum and dad I think or James and Nia. This is James and Nia because mum and dad bought me the artistic vibrance. I bought this with the intention of making the sew over at Eve dress. I'm pretty sure that's what this is going to turn into because I just I absolutely love it. Go white bunnies with little pink and sort of emerald green every now and again. So from far away it kind of looks like a ditzy floral print and then you get close and it's rabbits. Like I say, I'm a, I, I'm just a fan of, of print and I'm a fan of bunny print. So that's why I got that one. Yeah, this is a really, really precious fabric. I got this from fabric.com ages ago. I think it was one of the first expensive rayons I ever bought. It's a rifle paper company. It was way cheaper buying it from fabric.com and having it shipped over from America than it was buying it in the UK. I bought three meters of it with the intention of turning it into a sew over at Eve dress. So yes, this is the sew over at Eve dress out of that pile, which is why I said that I want to try something different. I mean, see, so this is my dilemma. I love the sew over at Eve dress. I wear it frequently. I can get it out of three meters of fabric. It's one of those ones that it, I don't have to try it on as I as I make it. I know it fits me. I've spent all the time getting it to fit me. It's really, really, really forgiving when my weight fluctuates. At the moment, I am just at the maximum sort of weight that I can wear my ones. But if I lose weight, then it still looks good. So I'm kind of, you know, there's a whole kind of stone of weight that you can lose or put on. I'm at the top of that <laughs> for the size that I've traced and make for myself and it still look good so it's a really forgiving dress which is another thing that I really like about it which is why I want to make so many of these things and these precious fabrics that I can't get any more of into these dresses into Eve dresses because I know I'll wear them and I know they I love I love them and I know they fit and I know I can get it out of this amount of fabric but there I've got so many patterns that I want to try and as I say, I don't really have wearable muslin fodder anymore. Very little of it. And again, I'm using quite a lot of it in this one. But for new dresses, so I, I hope you guys are proud of me for that. So this may well end up being a sew over at Eve dress. It, I, I'm not ruling it out because it is one of my favourites. But I'm really looking forward to it. This did, did say that it was dry clean only fabric. And I have washed it. It came out absolutely fine. I've got a couple of other Rifle Paper Company rayons in my stash. And I've washed those as well. And they've come out absolutely fine fine. I will not tumble dry them when I wash them as garments. I will hang them up and let them line dry but I didn't want a dress in, a dress in my wardrobe that was dry clean only because I just it just wouldn't happen. I wouldn't either wouldn't wear it or it just I'd wear it and then it would never get dry clean because it's an expensive thing especially for sort of like everyday dresses which is what I class the Eve as. And then my final fabric is another one that's going to hurt your eyes. It's this absolutely beautiful blue and white striped viscose with goldfish on it. This was in my Make 9 selection from last year and I thought I had decided what I was going to make with it. I thought I was going to make the Butterick 6554 wrap ruffle dress. I love that dress. I've made three now and there will definitely be more. I have five meters of this fabric but I think a couple of you and I know one of them was the very lovely Julian pointed out that this would look awesome as a shirt dress which is correct. It's going to be an absolute pig to cut it out as a shirt dress because again it's slippery rayon so it's going to be cutting it out is not going to be the most fun job you've ever had in the world. Running out of time I've waffled so much. Two secs. There we go that's better. Yes cutting this out and making sure that every stripe is yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a pain but it'll be worth it. I think what I'm gonna do is I am going to make the Vogue 9345 with this because I absolutely love that pattern. I am gonna fully line it which I did with the Dolce & Gabbana banana leaf dress 
because that cotton lawn was so see-through that if I hadn't have lined it I would have always had to wear a slip underneath it which I tend to do anyway but I would like the option of slip or no slip so yeah I'm gonna fully line this one and I have five meters of it and that dress has a really lovely full skirt I'm gonna make it sleeveless because it's a summery dress but I will end up with enough to make a top out of this as well which is really really exciting so that is my final fabric giant pile <laughs> As I say, I this is the rest of June and all of July's sewing plans and fabrics for those. There probably will be a few others that sneak in. You can't quite see it, but this cubby hole up here is full of blue and pink and purple viscose jerseys that I want to make some t-shirts out of to go with these collections. As I've mentioned, I'm at the end of the turquoise and blue collection. This is one of the pieces. I think that these are going to blend in really well with that previous collection so that it's going to give me kind of lots more styling options, especially with the fact that I'm going to have more tops and separate separates in there. So I think yeah the two collections are going to work really well together as well which is great that was a lot of waffle wasn't it and that was a lot of fabric let me know in the comments down below which one you are looking forward to seeing the most i can't quite decide i think it's probably the goldfish fabric because I have had it in my stash for so long and I have been, I, the reason I'm precious about it is because I can't get it anymore and I don't want to make the wrong thing out of it which is why it's taken me this long to get to a definite this is the thing that I am going to make. I think for me it's the goldfish fabric. Let me know in the comments which one you're looking forward to most. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!